Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. We're back today for part 62 and you all know what it means. We talked about it last time in great depth. It is the Carabao Cup final, our first big professional domestic cup final. The only finals we've had previously were at Kef and Druids. That was all the way back in the Welsh Semi-Pro League. However, today we've got a chance as massive underdogs to produce the unthinkable. But are we massive underdogs? We beat Chelsea in the league about a month and a half ago. We're still just above them in the league, albeit they've had a poor season. They've got Europe to focus on. They're still in the FA Cup, all of that. But Carlo Ancelotti's boys have not been doing too well. So although as a club we're massive underdogs, on recent form we might well be the favourites. Of course, Big Cup final occasion means the only time you get me close to a, an attire that's appropriate, albeit the rest of the outfit's not. But if you're looking forward to seeing if we can get the victory and how we do away at Newcastle, please do put a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from two long-term stories. We've got a big season review with Hemel Hempstead tomorrow before a transfer special at the end of the week from that one. And of course, we've also got Review the 92 coming back. We've got four episodes reviewing football grounds around the country and those will be starting from next Monday. So a massive thank you for your incredible support as always. You can find anything you may have missed up in the eye above, including the Twitch channel and the football podcast too. But let's get cracking, shall we? Because this is a potentially series-defining episode. If we can win this competition, I would imagine we become a lot more maybe appealing to clubs right at the top of European football. We're already doing a great job with Palace, but we're only eight points ahead of Spurs in eighth. We could still fall away, as we did at the end of last year. What I really want to see is how we compete with lots of home games coming up. We've mentioned we're better on the road normally, and we played a lot of mid-table clubs last month. Let's see how we've got on, though. So you were with me as we were battered by Liverpool. Well, I say battered. We were pretty even in the game, but the last 20 minutes we just ran out of legs. I think the biggest difference here, if you look across our season, when we've had our defeats, which if we look at the two over Christmas, if we look at the United game there, they're all where we've either played in a midweek game or had a midweek game straight after, apart from that run of three in September against the big boys. But if we look at this month, we disappointingly fell out of the FA Cup. Not because I wanted to get through or expected to get through, because we were one all with a minute to go, and we threw it away in the 94th minute against 10 men. But we played a complete reserve side. You can see it. Hinnestroza made his debut. Mitchell Francis, an academy player, started in midfield. Three others came off the bench. And although the keeper, Rosic, put in one hell of an effort, unfortunately picked up a long-term injury since as well. We couldn't quite do enough. So we fall out the FA Cup. This is our last chance and our only chance at Cup Silverware this year. But in the league, we bounced straight back. That rest for everyone after the Liverpool game meant we were fully refreshed against Brentford. And we won 4-0. Tyrese Campbell got a hat-trick. Tipple came off the bench and got a goal. And it was a really dominant performance. We looked at no threat at any stage of that game. We then had a 2-1 victory at Watford, which I can't say the same for. They were ahead until 20 minutes to go and this is the difference when we're only playing once a week or we've got fresher legs. You notice that we always finish strong and the difference with that Liverpool game, the difference with Burnley over Christmas is that we didn't and even the West Ham Cup tie. Whereas these games we finished stronger, Tipple and to Hart with the late goals there. And in the same story against Wolves, we were behind in two minutes, level in five, ahead after 21 and then Boyer wrapped it up late on, another strong finish. Lenormand, Abdul Qadir, and Selly and Boyer, the scorers. My worry, I guess, to the end of the season is that we've now got five home games left, which we're not normally great in. We've seen that most of our defeats are at home this season. In terms of the away fixtures, we've also got to play Moneybags Newcastle, which we'll see today. But then the likes of Manchester United as well, and team scrapping at the bottom. So it could get a little bit tasty just yet. We're overachieving, we're doing incredibly well, but I'm not sure if we can maintain it. The only way to find out, and the only way to see if we can guarantee Europe early, is to get straight into this League Cup final, which should be massive. It is Crystal Palace versus Chelsea, a star-studded Chelsea side, it's got to be said. If we have a look at their star players, I mean the money they're earning is virtually obscene, but you've got the likes of Rodriguez, a left-winger regen who's world-class, Basically the closest thing that they've developed to Messi since Argentina. Makoko up front is a world-class striker. Probably the second best in the game after Haaland. 
They've still got Lukaku absolutely flying up there too. Kulazewski obviously just gone to Spurs in real life, but look at his quality here. One of the best midfielders in the world. Drakowski, always a go-to goalkeeper in this game. And much more. Ben Chilwell's still there. hudson Adoy, Reese James, Mason Mount. There's a lot of quality in this team. They've still got Federico Perea as well. The reincarnation of RFM 21 star at Spurs. But let's go and get cracking. It is a big game, a big episode. We've got to try our best to deliver. So let's get through to the team selection. Have a look at what we've picked. I'm sure there's no surprises here. We start in goal with Camille Grabara, who's produced big performances when it matters. Albeit he had a poor one on camera last time against Liverpool. Teo and Bogle, the fullbacks with Lenormand and Mepham as centre-half. Zahar, Boya and Ndombele, the central midfield three. And then Abdul Qadir, Lanes and Tyrese Campbell, the front three. Tyrese Campbell not started the last two games, you may have noticed. Just having a little rest since his Brentford hat-trick. And he's doing really well. So hopefully he's back and firing 18 goals for the season. Abdul Qadir, though, was the man of the match against Wolves. So if he can start to find form now... Could be a wonderful end to the season. Everyone but Ali Akin is on the bench. Alan Rios not quite back to fitness yet. So we'll look at him next weekend against Newcastle. And Chris Meppham, because of the eight days between the Watford and the Wolves game, got to have his week holiday, which has made a massive difference to his fitness and to now his form as well. So into the game we go. It's Palace v Chelsea. Let me know in the comments. Is it going to be the same as Kef and Druids v TNS? Are we going to keep losing against the bigger opposition? Or are we finally... Going to have a victory in a cup final. I wouldn't write off this side because we're ruthless on the counter. And maybe playing an away from home style might suit us down to the ground. Let's go and find out. Palace v Chelsea. Predictions in the comments. Well it's two changes for us with Campbell and Ndombele back in. Let's have a look at Chelsea though. Five changes for them. Makoku, Kulazewski, Rhys James all in as well as a couple of others. They've got Lukaku and Rodriguez in that attacking line too. That front four, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better one in world football, it's got to be said. But Stoney centre-half, Drakowski in goal, and loads of quality on the bench. Even the likes of Conor Gallagher, who are well down the pecking order. So let's go and get into it. Of course, a former loanee at Palace is Conor Gallagher. We're going to ask the lads to play how they did last time, try and get their hands on that trophy. But it's more a hope than an expectation. If Chelsea push on to us, though, and let us counter, we could have a lovely day. Well, how's this for a boring half an hour? We have had one shot on target, but no highlight. Chelsea have offered nothing either. And it's turning into one of the worst games we've seen in a long time. we are each the halfway mark with no highlights. Not been a great performance, but we're in the game at the halfway point. And as we've mentioned many, many times, we tend to finish strong when we're fit and firing. So if we can keep in this game, we've got a chance. But we know the quality Chelsea have got off the bench, so... With 55 minutes gone, I'm not confident, but I'm growing more and more hopeful. Kulazewski's come off for Moussa at the substitute, and Chelsea have got a corner. First highlight with an hour gone. Tyrese Campbell heads away. Lanes picks it up. Can he start the counter? He can't. He goes back to Selly and Boyer. He can, though. He just surges through three players. Plays wide to Teo, who's flying down the left wing. He chips it up towards Campbell, but Stoney deals with it well. There's that counter threat, though. It's always there if you need it. We will think about subs in a minute as Drakowski throws out into Moussa, the sub in midfield. Playing a 1-2 with his centre-half and goes back to Bastoni. They've beaten the press there. Tyrese Campbell caught out and Soler plays into Rodriguez. Great turn. He's a world-class player and he's delivered there. But Gravara tips wide. It's a wonderful save. Lukaku and Soler are off. hudson Adoy is on. Didn't see the other one. Will it be Federico Perea? Might be, as Mepham heads away. It is Noah O'Sullivan comes on. The hudson Adoy picks it up to Musa. First substitute gets to the byline. Two players closing him down. If he gets out of there, we've not done well enough. But Tahar does brilliantly. Solid anchor man. And we'll think about our own changes now. So 20 minutes to go. We've got a mix here between unfit players who have run out of steam and players that aren't playing very well. So I think we're going to have to balance this a little. I'm going to start by taking Tyrese Campbell off for Chris Tipple. Two good strikers. Campbell's been awful today, and Tipple's in decent form. Lanez on the left wing. I'm not sure any of the sub-wingers are strong enough. I don't really want to take off Boyer or those two. So for now, I'm going to leave it at one sub, and we'll make the others a bit later on. Of course, extra time is a threat here as well. 
Hopefully, though, we can nick one on the counter. If anyone looks more likely, though, it's Chelsea in the second half, as they get it with Musa in the middle. Switch to Rodriguez on the left. You know my superstition. It's going to lead to a goal, isn't it? Makoko gets to the edge of the box. Back he goes. Chilwell. And he blazes it over the bar. It stays nil-nil. The sub will be made. And now we've got to think about what we do next. Lanez is now struggling for fitness and for form. I know he's a brilliant player. But this last five or six games, he's only really had one star performance. So I'm going to bring on... Do I go big goal John Morcio, who scored a few for us before? Or Reese Nelson and change the shape a little bit? Call me an idiot. I'm going for Nelson. I'm going to change him to an inverted winger on support or attack as well. And we're going to try and really push Chelsea back in central areas. They want to use whip. Let's get down the middle. As we've got a throw on the left with Teo. Takes it into Reese Nelson, the sub. Finds Teo again. Nelson's in behind. This could be a super sub. Oh my word, he set up a goal. Reese Nelson off the bench. Makes the underlapping run as an inverted winger. Gets inside. Gets to the byline. Cuts it back to Tipple, who can't miss from two yards. And the two subs we've made have combined to score the goal. That might just win us our first big trophy. What do we do in terms of subs now? See, Selly and Boyer's really struggling. Do we push ourselves back a little bit? Boyer replaced by Castrofi, who will drop to a support duty. And let's try and cling on, because this would be a remarkable turn-up. But again, we're finishing strong, as Teo throws in from the left to Taha. Not Reese Nelson, sorry. As Ndombele gets it on the left. Big ball in. What an effort that is. Into Abdul Qadir. Back again to Nelson. Just wide of the post. I thought that was going to be the crowning of the best substitute we've ever seen. But it wasn't to be. As Bogle gives it to Abdul Qadir. Castrovilli to Ndombele. That'll do from Tipple. Got a tiny little tickle on the shot. And it diverted it away from the keeper. These substitutions have been incredible. And I've talked about this for so long. I know that I like making this a challenge and that it should be more difficult. But I just found, think we found that mix of the perfect club as Chelsea miss a header. Where the counter-attacking style works ruthlessly. And we've seen we struggle a bit at home but on the road. Whether it's at a neutral venue or anywhere else. We are simply unstoppable. Crystal Palace beat Chelsea 2-0 in the League Cup final. Again, we finished a stronger side. We continue to do that over and over again. And now we get to lift the trophy. I don't even know who the skipper is. I think it's Mepham. But either way, the Carabao Cup is lifted by Crystal Palace. The first big trophy of the save. The first trophy we've won aside from non-league, I think. And that is an incredible effort. What a moment for Crystal Palace. And don't forget the other caveat of that. European football guaranteed for next season. An excellent performance, another really strong finish. And everything I've said about this side is proven right again. They're defying all the odds. They're a joy to work with. Nelson gets an assist and Dombele too. And Tipple, the substitute, scores two goals. Might be in line to start the next league game. Let's get through the dressing room. We can't do anything but praise these lads. They were brilliant again. But they've got to regroup because we're away to Newcastle next week. Why not chase the Champions League now? So aside from all of this stuff, let's see the reaction to what we've achieved. A brilliant win of the Carabao Cup. We've led Crystal Palace to glory. We've pleased the board, which is always very important. Chris Tipple, what a performance. I mean, the lad's improving immeasurably, but he still shouldn't be competing with your likes of Lukaku, with Kulazewski, with Makoko. He shouldn't be doing it. We've guaranteed qualification for the playoff of the Europa Conference. So there's European football here, even if we bottle it in the league. But why not chase the Europa League? Why not chase the Champions League? We've got a side that's very much capable of it. And we've got a side that's at the top of their game. Well, it was all going a bit too well, wasn't it? You remember when we first came to Crystal Palace? And it was before the Newcastle game as well, which we did still win. But we have now got a month and a bit without any senior keepers. Because Krabara has just picked up an injury for two months. And I could play him, but he's then going to miss four months instead. We've also got Dragon Rosic, our backup keeper, out for four to five weeks with a lower back stress fracture. And that means I'm going to have to dip into the under-23s. We've got that 27-year-old keeper that you may remember was bought on deadline day last time out. He's only one and a half star ability. Where is he? It is Tom Bilson. 
this non-league standard goalkeeper is going to be our first choice for the next month or so. Probably up until the next international break. So into the senior squad he goes. Look, he's an okay keeper. Interestingly, the one who we had to bring in last year who was third choice was Pete Dobson. He's also injured and out for three weeks. So four senior goalkeepers are at the club. One of them is fit. If he gets injured, I don't know what we do. So I don't think there is actually another goalkeeper at the club. I wonder now, I don't know how this works in FM. We're down to one senior goalkeeper. Is there a way we can get an emergency loan in? Does anyone know how that works? Not that it's going to help me in this episode. Because surely, if you've only got one goalkeeper fit of the whole club, you have a right to bring someone in. Well, I've just clarified in here. Obviously, players can be signed on free agent deals at any time, but that's down to Dougie in this save. It's not up to us. I have seen, though, emergency goalkeepers can be signed at any time during the season if no first-team keepers are available. So if Bilson does get injured, it looks like we would be able to bring in a keeper. Whether the director of football is smart enough to do that, who knows. But at the moment... Bilson is the man we're reliant on for at least the next three or four fixtures. We'll be back in a minute for Newcastle. Goalkeeperless when it comes to the senior team. Fitness test time for Newcastle. And it doesn't really matter about the outfield players, does it? If we go back a couple of days, Tahar also had a knock, but looks like he's come through it. But even the media are reporting the goalkeeper crisis. The only option is Tom Bilson, who has yet to make his debut. Well, that's going to change today. And shows whilst it wasn't an exciting deadline day signing back in August. Shows just how important it was, doesn't it? United have beaten Liverpool, so there's a bit less pressure on us from below. But let's see what we can achieve with essentially a non-league standard keeper in goal. Maybe League 2 at a push, but it's certainly not what we were hoping for. Newcastle in 10th place, starting to recover after a poor start. Let's go and pick our 11. We'll be back in a minute to run through it. So two changes to the starting lineup: One at the back, one at the front. Of course, Bilson is coming in for his first start at the club. That is entirely enforced. He is a one-star keeper as a support duty sweeper keeper. I don't want to change our tactics. It's not going to have much of an impact on the result, so he'll have to perform that. Tipples in from the start up front after his brace up the bench in the cup final. And then on the bench, we brought in Alan Rios after injury and Ali Akin. Hinestroza and Arthur drop down. So the rest of the team's the same. It's a pretty strong eleven. But I'm really worried about the keeper. It's deja vu against Newcastle. The same as we had in what was our second or third episode at the club last year. Now let's see if we can get the same outcome. Because on that day, I believe we won 1-0. Well, Bilson didn't even have a squad number. And it's a good job that we changed Hinnestroza in the last episode to 16. Because we need the number 13 shirt now. The likes of Edison Kovacic, Svanberg and Neres in for Newcastle. Some great players. Skippered by Anana, Jared Bowen and Patson Dak at top class too. It's a wonderful team, but they're flatter to deceive a lot in this save. They've underachieved for the squad they've got. They're probably better on paper than us, but have been below us both seasons. Now let's see what they do today. St. James is not even full. I mean, that's a sign the fans aren't too happy. Well, thankfully a quiet first 20 minutes and we haven't yet faced a shot at all. We've had a few but not hit the target yet. I do worry though what will happen the first time we face one on target as Teo gets it at left back to Mepham. Can we outscore Newcastle? That's going to be the big question today. Mepham again. He gives it away to Bowen. Not the situation where we want to lose the ball one-on-one. -on -one. Angelo puts it forward. Dakar in. Great challenge, Lenormand. Rare error from Mepham, but it's been recovered. And now Tipple on the counter to Boyer. Up towards Lannes. Good interception. End-to-end -end stuff. It's frantic. It's full of errors. As Boyer comes forward again down the right-hand side. Got time and space to run into. The fullbacks got lost. Delivers to the back post. Lannes is in. Just not quite in top form at the minute. Is shot straight at the keeper, Anana. And the skipper holds it for Newcastle. As Abdul Qadir puts in a big back post corner. And Lenormand against his former club. He joined us from there in the summer. Kenny Tete went the other way. And Lenormand has put in a wonderful effort from the head. And it gives Crystal Palace the lead with half an hour gone. Tete is on the bench actually for Newcastle. But he's not the type of man that's going to save him a game. 1-0 Palace, 5 to the break. And Newcastle are coming forward with Bowen. Svanberg picks it up in the middle. I just worry what happens when they have that first good chance. Bilson not really been tested yet, but has got a good rating. So we've got to give him praise so far. As Bowen gets himself in, this is the moment. Bowen in. What a save, Bilson. 1-on-1 one -on -one from Jared Bowen. 
Maybe I had no reason to be alarmed. That's a fantastic bit of keeping. As Bowen delivers the corner to the back post. Keeper got a bit lost there. But it's headed over. We survive it. We still lead as half-time approaches. As we're back in one minute of second half stoppage time. Teo getting the ball from a long kick. Goes down the line to Lanes, who finds Ndombele. Be a lovely time for a second as Boyer finds Tipple. Through to Lanes, 25 yards out. Abdul Qadir to Boyer. Oh, off the line. Anana came with his feet inexplicably. Should have just smothered it. But if anything, our keeper looks the better at the moment. 1-0 Palace at half-time. It should have been two. But it's been a really solid performance. Again, we're showing our class on the road. Now let's see if we can keep it up in the second half. Well, an hour on the clock. Jaden Bogle with a free kick just inside the Newcastle half. Plays a 1-2. Gets it to Lenorm and the Mepham. Has lost it in this position once already today, but plays safe this time. Gets it again from Taylor, the left back. Into Taha. To Tipple. I mean, on the counter, we are running absolute rings round them. Lanes finds Boyer. It's a great save by Anana. And we'll think about changes in a minute. Lanes actually the worst rated player on the pitch for us. Just not really found his form. He's wasted a couple of chances, given the ball away once or twice. But he's still part of a good team performance as Boyer gets down the right-hand side. Good challenge, Dakar. And we win another throw. It's been an exemplary away day so far. We're just over 20 to go. Lanes is really struggling physically. So I'm tempted to bring back Rios, but I'm not going to. We're going to go for Nelson again. He deserves an appearance after what he did in the cup final. And Dombele struggling a bit, so we'll bring on Sasseres this time for him. And the rest of the team can stay as it is. I might take Tipple off for Campbell, but I do kind of want to give Rios a comeback as well. We've got to go on rating though, haven't we? Tyrese Campbell on for Chris Tipple. Can he be a super sub this time? Reverse the effect of the last game. Well, a quiet finish as we head towards four minutes of stoppage time. We've changed the fullback's duties to a slightly more defensive one. With 15 seconds left, it looks like we're going to win again. We are so good anywhere apart from Selhurst Park. Or those Fanbergs in might be a late equaliser. Have I spoken too soon? Oh my word, Tom Bilson with a crucial 94th minute save. Exceptional goalkeeping, got it away from the danger too. And that wraps up a 1-0 Crystal Palace win. Tom Bilson, you deserve all the praise you get because that performance was stunning. But the Normand, the match winner against his former club. Let's go and have a look at the schedule for when we're next going to be back. Well, Chelsea and Liverpool both lost, so they stay four and seven points behind us, respectively. Everton and Spurs, I know they've got a game in hand, but potentially at risk of falling out of sight. If we have a look at the schedule, though, there's not too long left. So I think we just come back for the last two games. That means seven off camera, four of them are at home. Three of them without a first team goalkeeper, though Bilsom delivered far beyond the odds today. He exceeded expectations. And then we'll be back for Leicester away, who are ninth, and Villa at home, who are 19th, and might still be scrapping for their lives at this point. But what a seven games it's going to be. The unthinkable could still happen, but at home, where we face a few more shots, I worry without a first choice goalkeeper. Let me know in the comments where you think we're going to finish, though. What on earth you thought of that League Cup final performance? And then Bilson at Newcastle. Some unbelievable saves. We continue to defy all expectations. If you want to stay up to date and find out and you did enjoy the video, please do put a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from Two Long Term Stories. We'll be back in two days' time to find out how this season finishes. And then the day after that on Sunday... We'll have a transfer special from Hemel Hempstead Town. A big weekend to come. I hope you'll stick with me for it. You can find the Twitch channel for live streams in the eye above. The football podcast for loads of content from the championship. And of course the food channel's up there too. But thank you very much for watching. Your continued support as always. It is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you next time for the final two games of a brilliant Premier League season with Crystal Palace. <laughs>